This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. Wait, don't sit down yet. I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 444 How to Buy a Sofa online and we do a lot of shopping online and we've bought a lot of furniture online and Kelly you've just bought a sofa online so I feel like we are ready to uh, give some a lot of tips here well yeah that was sort of the inspiration for this whole episode I talked about it in the last episode or the one right before that and we got some feedback and we thought this might be a good time to do a deep dive into that because not only are we all normally shopping online, but now we're really shopping online because a lot of the stores you might want to go to or are not open or you're just not feeling comfortable going to a store and having a sit or a lie down on a sofa. So we want to unravel any mystery that might be um, out there about how to buy a sofa online and point you in the right direction. Right. And you know what? Let's just cut to the chase. The bottom line is do your research. Oh, Isn't that the key yes. point of all of this? Isn't that so true about so many things in life? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Now, of course, we're going to go into what kind of research to do, but that's really the bottom line here is you can't just see something and go, I like that. That's pretty and buy it. Uh, That's just kind of very dangerous to do. Yes. And especially if you say, oh, that's so pretty. I love it. And it's so inexpensive. Let me buy it. (laughs) Oh, that's not good at all. I know. When it's a sofa and it's so inexpensive, there might be a reason for that. So we're going to tell you all about that uh, today, as well as a bunch of other fun things. Oh, I want to interrupt you. Yes, please do interrupt me. I'm going to interrupt you because I have an exciting announcement. Are you ready? I'm ready. We've hit 4 million downloads on our podcast. Well, I'm not going to pretend I'm surprised because you already told me that, (laughs) and that was a couple of weeks ago. So I bet we're beyond that now. Well, actually, it was a couple of months ago. That's how on top of things I am, folks. (laughs) Well, you just had so many exciting (laughs) things. You just had to prioritize. Well, Uh, yay us. But it happened. Right. Okay, I'm giving us a little standing ovation. Um, well, no, yay, yay for everyone who listens. Yay. It's not yes. us, it's everybody who listens. Thank you so much. That's right, because it's really hard to listen to yourself four million times. So it's oh, because yeah. you guys have been listening. So thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. And tell your friends, let's make it 10 million. Let's build the community because we're better together and when there's more of us we're even better than that so we would love for you to share decorating tips and tricks with your friends and family and let them know that you're enjoying the show and uh thanks again to everyone that's been leaving these fantastic reviews anita gave me the heads up that we had some more terrific reviews and one of our dtt team members maria elena thank you so much i recognized your name oftentimes we don't recognize the name because it's an apple podcast name so if you have left a a review of decorating tips and tricks we really appreciate it thank you so much yeah so today we're going to talk all about how to buy a quality sofa that you will love one of the first tips uh, i have is to make sure to get a swatch and, and I can't tell you, you know, you and I buy so much stuff online and I look at the reviews. I mean, it could be a skirt, a sofa, a pillow. I look at all the reviews and something I see an awful lot anytime there's fabric involved is, uh, it was more faded. It was more bright. It was more chartreuse. It was more orange. So you really, really need to have that swatch. And I would suggest that if there's some sofa that you're interested in but you're not really ready to buy go ahead and get the swatch now and here's why because sometimes there's a sale and it may just be for one day 
And, you know, I don't want you just saying, okay, I'm going to buy it sight unseen. I mean, I want you to have seen the swatch and then you can kind of take your time. And then, you know, if it looks like it's going, if they're not, it's not going to be in stock or it's on sale, then you can pounce when you need to, you know, cause that's, that's an agonizing thing that happens sometimes is something goes on sale and you haven't seen the swatch yet, but the sale's ending at midnight. Excellent point. And Anita kicked us off with talking about swatches. And yes, so important. And if you cannot get a swatch, that is a big red flag. Why don't they want you to see their fabric? Or, uh, you know, or the company just doesn't have the quality or it's not at the price point that you, you would be confident that you could get a great sofa if they can't provide you with swatches. Now, sometimes they'll charge you for a few swatches, but I really think any company that's worth their um, salt or worth their sofa, so to speak, usually provides you with at least a couple of free swatches. But if you have to spend about five bucks and get all the swatches that you can get for your free uh, number or for the five dollars, whatever they're charging, you know, because you might see something online that you think you really love, but maybe when it gets there, it is a little darker. It is a little lighter. So a variety of swatches, um, they're going to send them to you, whether they're free or for the amount you're paying for anyway. So you might as well get more than one. And I liked what Anita said about the reviews with regard to the fabrics, uh, because oftentimes that's very telling. And that's definitely one of the first things people notice, obviously, is is the color or what it looked like as to be online. So definitely read the reviews even before you're asking for the swatches that might give you some direction as to uh, what shade you might want or even color. But the other thing is the texture of the fabric because right. sometimes uh, I've just bought a dress online mm-hmm. and I thought it was going to be a stiffer fabric and it was a very, you know, kind of a slinky fabric. So mm-hmm. it really is very important to look at that swatch because, you know, you may get this watch and realize that the fabric is just not that sturdy. Right. And we talked about doing research in the beginning. So when I'm thinking about research for pretty much anything that I'd be purchasing online, certainly if it's a big ticket item, I'm going to want to ask some questions, take my own measurements, get swatches, and read the reviews. Those things you should be doing for anything that's a fairly large ticket item online. Now, how do you ask questions? There might be a live chat. You might be able to send an email. A lot of these companies that are producing sofas have design consultants that work with them that can speak with you either on the phone or chat with you online or at least email back and forth. And take your own measurements of your space. Don't see something online and just assume it's going to fit in your space because it's an L shape or it's a U shape or it's a regular straight sofa or, oh, I'm sure that chase length will be fine. You have to do your own measurements in your own space and take into consideration the size of the arms and the length of the seat. All these things will really come into play. And because you're not going to do the sit test and you're not going to see it in person, uh, you want to be able to take the measurements and then try to translate them into what the feel is. So, you know, if you're, you have a sofa that is maybe not so deep and you want to get something that's deeper, measure what you have, see how that feels. And you kind of have to just imagine, you know, what would it feel like if I got it three inches longer? Or, you know, how would it feel if the arm wasn't so rounded and uh, it was more a straight line? So think about what you've got already. Most people will have a sofa that they're replacing. Uh, If you don't have a sofa at all, then maybe you put some tape on the floor and you measure it out and take very good measurements of your space and or the sofa that you're trying to replace even before you start to do your search, because you might get your head turned by something and maybe it's not the right thing for your particular circumstances. I want to go back to the reviews for a second because I went to some websites and they didn't have reviews listed. So I'm wondering that this is a new thing with some of these big, well-known websites that sell sofas. I was very disappointed there were not reviews. Now, what they did have instead of reviews were questions answered And they had a lot of real life photos of the sofas in people's homes. So uh, I just wanted to warn people of that. But I think those photos 
are very important because you're really going to see, especially if it's something like a slip covered sofa, it may look so neat and tidy in the picture, but then you'll see it in somebody's home and it's all rumpled and, and crumply looking. So I think these photos are so important because you know it's not when it's in someone's home, the fabric's not pinned on, it's not photoshopped, it doesn't it's not styled and you know it, you know and sometimes there's maybe a, a lump somewhere that's kind of funny and if someone's taking the picture they may be highlighting, "Oh, look, it doesn't quite look right here. It doesn't fit properly here." So those real life photos I think are just as important as the reviews um although like I said the reviews I I don't know. Have you been seeing a lot of reviews or is it just the sites I went to? The the brands that I'm going to mention at the end all had reviews and okay. I can recommend all of these brands. Um so that's what I found. I would be a little cautious if there was a site that had no reviews. Well, but I'm talking about, you know, the ones I'm talking about, the two that I'm specifically speaking about were West Elm and Pottery mm-hmm. Barn. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, not some unknown, no name. And I think you're absolutely right. You want to check all the measurements, not just the length, but the width and the height. And there's so much to go into this. Uh, you going to want to know, is it going to fit through the door of your house? Is it going to fit? Excellent point. Uh, in your space. So I, you know, you also kind of want to think, how is it going to be used? For example, I have a chest behind my sofa. So I need to have the sofa up high enough that it's not lower than that chest, which acts like a sofa table. So you're going to have to think about stuff like that. If you have tall ceilings, is it a taller sofa? If you have low ceilings, is it a lower sofa? I mean, you really, it really needs to not just fit in the space, but visually work for the space that you have, not feel too crowded, but not feel skimpy for what you have. So I think there's a lot that's going into this. If you're a napper, you want to be sure that you, it's the right length for, to take a nap on. And then also how many people are going to be sitting on this sofa? Are, do you plan to have three people on? If so, you don't want to get a sofa with just two cushions because someone's going to be sitting on that crack in the center and that person's not going to be happy. (laughs) <laughs> so, being the person who sits on the crack in the middle of the sofa I'm telling you it's not a comfy that place person to sit. is very unhappy that person's not going to be happy with you so I mean you really have to take so much into consideration and it's the kind of stuff that if you're ordering it online you might not think of all these things this is why we're here Right. This is why we're doing this. This is a public service that we're doing, Anita. So yeah, and sitting on the crack is not nice. Uh, doing the sit test might not be possible, as I was saying, but you can get a lot of information from quality e-commerce sites. So yeah, first figure out what's quality, and we're going to talk to you about some quality sites where you can feel confident purchasing a, a sofa. Certainly not an exhaustive list. These are some brands that we've had experience with and that they're usually trusted brands. Um, What I'd be looking for in the description of a sofa is a full product description. I want to know everything they can tell me and they should list it all there where it's really easy to pull out the information. They should be giving you such details as what's the inside seat depth, Um, certainly what are the cushions composed of. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, What is the frame made of? We're also going to go into that in a bit. Great sites also will allow you to click around and pick your fabric and actually see the sofa in a different fabric. Because even online, you can get a really good sense of whether or not you like that fabric. Maybe you're picking out, you know, you're seeing the little square and maybe it's a, say it's a print. But then you click on it and the whole sofa on the website transforms to that print. And maybe it's just way too much print. You know well, what I'm no, saying? That's a, that's a good point. Because when mm-hmm. you see the print, is that a repeat every couple of inches or is it a repeat, you know, every foot? Right. So, I mean, it, how big is that pattern on the sofa? Uh, so, And that does make a difference. And I go back to the funny little story when I was little girl and my mom took me to purchase a sofa and here I am with my mom she finally picks out this fabric only this sofa is coming through the door and she's saying my sofa didn't have birds on it I didn't pick it I didn't pick out a sofa with birds on it there were birds everywhere but the the swatch she saw on that hot summer day (laughs) 
did not have a bird on it. Is she anti she had, bird? She, it, they weren't really nice looking birds. They kind of oh. look pointy beaks. They kind of oh. look like mean birds. Mean birds. And okay. then we had to live with that sofa. I thought it was way too itchy. Birds are not. Anyway, but, you know, there she was. She saw a little swatch. It didn't have a bird on it. Well, and, and you know, we have also a sofa horror story at from my family when I was a kid. And I don't know what possessed my dad because I would think most husbands would know better to do, than to do this. Do you know he came home one day with a whole living room furniture, a whole <laughs> living room full of furniture? Okay, that would out. be something from the, the men that I have lived with, my, being my dad and my husband, like that would so never happen. That would be an alternative universe. Well, I was happened. going to say exactly. It would never happen here either, but he came home with the house, you know, the whole, the sofa, the coffee table, the end tables, and there may have been two chairs to go with it. And it was all, okay, all, this is kind of odd because, you know, my dad's kind of a, he was kind of a, you know, a country guy from Oklahoma. It was all French. This is where you got it. I don't know. Yes. It was an French. early influence. Oh, and no. it was cream colored. Back when you didn't dare, nobody bought cream colored furniture back wow. then. Because, you know, it could get dirty. dirty. Ah. Nobody did that. Wow. In fact, I mean, my mother, I just. I That's think it was, an interesting day. You just wonder what possessed him. There were months, I think, before she forgave him for that. You know, and they were on a tight budget, so I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he got a really good deal on it. Oh, wow. I hope he wasn't thinking he was doing a really great thing, and then he got the want I think he thought he was doing a really good thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Yes, I know. Well, I don't know. There you go. So, yeah, back to seeing it in several fabrics. We, uh, obviously, that can go wrong. So you want to be able to see... It in several fabrics, even if you're getting a swatch, even if you order a swatch, if it's a if it's a print, you really need to see it on the whole sofa, I think, before you buy it. Or you have to be really clear, or maybe you are familiar with that fabric and you know the repeats and all of that. Um, so if if that information is not available to you in the full product description, you know, start typing in that chat box. Get on the phone. Send them an email, get as much information as you can, because while there's a lot to take into consideration buying a sofa online, you can certainly do it to great success. And I have done it and many of my clients have done it. And I'm sure many, many people listening have done it. And um, there's certainly a lot of companies selling sofas online. So it's just uh, a situation where you have to understand what you need to know. And that's what we're pointing out to you today. So you can make a really informed decision. Let's talk about the frame because that's super important. And again, you know, it's kind of like if you're not a car person, it's like the engine. You're like, oh, I love this car. I love the color. I love the shape. It's so pretty. (laughs) Uh, But you don't really know if it works inside. Um, So that's sort of like the frame of your sofa. You can't see it. So you're saying Look under the hood is what you're saying. Yeah, look under the cushion. You know, I mean, if you know, so to speak, you can't really do that. But here's what you need to know. It really should be a hard wood frame. Some frames are made of engineered wood. That's not so good. But you know what? If the budget does not allow for hardwood, if you need to buy something that's in the range of more of an engineered wood, at least you know, right? So you understand what you, what the, the, um, options are and then you can make a decision based on your preferences and your budget right so there's hardwood engineered and you're not going to believe this because i was really shocked but some of these super fast ship sofas the frame is actually made of a heavy duty cardboard oh you don't want that and they're probably not going to tell you that it's cardboard on their site because who would buy a sofa that's made of cardboard they might as well just make one out of Cheerio boxes kind of thing. But I'm sure it's a heavy duty pressed sort of cardboard, but it's cardboard, right? So you should really need to understand this. And if the price is super, super low and they can get it to you tomorrow, it may be made of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so be aware, you know, and if you're like, hey, this is from my Airbnb. I don't care if it lasts for a year. I expect to be replacing it. Then order a cardboard sofa and get it tomorrow. But if you're, you want it to last, don't buy a cardboard sofa. But doesn't that sound like 
it wouldn't take too long before that thing would start sagging. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, or you know what I did one time? I bought some, actually, they were settees, and they were matching. I worked at this furniture store, and I, they were matching. They were so cute. Uh, Evie was having a sleepover. This was when she was like 12 or something, and they were laughing. They were so loud upstairs. And you know what? At one point, it got really quiet up there, and I was like, <laughs> Uh-oh. Thank. Oh yeah. Well, again, a normal <laughs> person who's a mother would know this, but I'm like, thank goodness they're settled down, so I can focus on, you know, what I'm Maybe doing. Maybe they're crawled out the window to go somewhere else. Or well, yeah. Well, then there was crying. Oh and, no. And then I went upstairs, and everyone wanted to go home. Oh no. And then I realized what had happened. They had broken my. It was brand new. They oh had jumped on it and had, uh, yeah, there was a board on the back of it and it completely broke in two. <laughs> so, Whoa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was the end of that party. Yeah, they were like, uh-oh, <laughs> we need to leave before Mrs. Joyce finds out what we did to her brand yeah. new. And they actually did go out the window, but it wasn't because uh, of any, uh, <laughs> up to any tricks. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that so, is, that's, you I'm know, sorry that happened. That's a well, but right, but I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens when something is not that expensive. I didn't, mm-hmm. I mean, it was not a high-end piece. And now they told me, that you know it was must have been a fluke with that piece but you know also but you kind of also keep in mind how is this going to be used are are going to are there going to be kids jumping up and down on it i mean is it going to have a lot of heavy use mm-hmm. and i think you really need to factor that into how sturdy a sofa you, are you going to need so if you've got kids who are going to be jumping up and down on it and if you have kids when you leave their house that is what they do <laughs> <laughs> Because certainly if you invite other ones over, they're all doing well, it. And I'm a former kid. I know how it works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're going to have to keep that in mind. That is an, an excellent tip as well. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to get the highest quality frame you can get. There's a lot of information about how it can be put together, whether it's it's mitered and it's securely fastened and all of this. So a very high quality site that's producing excellent frames will give you all this information. And if you don't see it there, you'll now you'll know to ask the question. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health. Potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. 
and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Another thing to know, or it's like a buzzword, is kiln dried. If the wood is kiln dried, that's a better quality wood, and it's going to last longer, and it's going to be stronger. Um, There's a lot of um, frames that are made in North Carolina, which is wonderful. So we are supporting some U.S. businesses. So even if the uh, fabric might come from someplace else, or the the filling might be made someplace else, the frame a lot of them are made right here in North Carolina, and that's a very high quality uh, what they're producing in High Point. So that's something, if you see that on a site, they're telling you that for a reason because it is ensuring you that the quality is going to be great. I know Ballard produces, uh, I think, all of their frames for their sofas in North Carolina. Well, and that really is the furniture capital of the U.S. really. I mean, that they've been making furniture there for decades and good quality furniture. So, yeah. So I would def- definitely trust something built there more than something, dare I say, made in China. No, it's an excellent point because sometimes things that are made in China are uh, of lesser quality. And sometimes you know, oh, I'm paying less for this and I want to pay less for it because it's not my sofa, you know, it's an accessory piece or it's something like that. And we'll get into those specific brands later on, but the one that I purchased, the sofa I recently purchased is made in China. And I was a little concerned about that, but I'm telling you the quality is fantastic. Another thing to think about is when they deliver your sofa. I just wanted to point this out because this is so important. When the delivery comes, I've had deliveries come and there's something wrong with the item. So here's the way it works. I would not let the delivery guy, they're going to want to leave. They're going to get annoyed with you, but you just tell them to sit down and give them a Coke because <laughs> you want to, you need to look at this thing over because I've had furniture delivered and it was broken. And if they're gone, then it's a much more tedious process returning it. But if they're still there and it's got a problem, I just said, you know what? You need to go ahead and take this back and you're going to sign something, you know, so then you have a signed receipt that they picked it up and you're not paying for delivery back. You're not, um, you know, and then you just know it's taken care of and you're not not having to call and wait for this all to be taken care of. You can get the white glove delivery with a lot of these services and then they will set it up and they will inspect it for you, but then you can inspect it too. And they will put it In the place it's going, if the legs need to be put on, they'll do that and move anything around that needs to be moved. So those are really the two options that it seems like most places have. Okay, let's talk about the filling of your cushions. So there's a couple of different options. Uh, There might be different price points. And there's definitely a level of maintenance, a different level of maintenance for the different types of uh, filling. Well, I mean, are you talking, yeah, so there's the foam, Mm -hmm. or there is a feather, or there's a feather wrap around a foam core. And the feather ones, I have a a friend who's got the feather cushions, and they require a lot of fluffing. And she's getting a little tired of doing that. I mean, my preference is the feather wrapped. Now, I like the feather uh, back cushions, Uh, because those are so much softer. But for the seat cushions, if you get the plain feather, it's just going to be a lumpy mess, I think. Yeah, as much as we love uh, the down, and of course we want to do humane down, if you can look into that, see uh, where these feathers are coming from and how they're sourcing them and all of that. Um, For your toss pillows, that's wonderful, but you really don't want that, I don't think, for your actual sofa cushions because I, Anita makes a great point. There is a lot of fluffing going on. I mean, every time someone sits there. Right. It's going to look funky every time you get up from sitting down on it. 
Right. So, so. and if it, but if that's your look, like super squishy, you know, mm-hmm. maybe shabby, chicy, yeah. that sort of thing, then that's what maybe you'd want. But if you like something that's going to be a little bit less maintenance, less fluffing, but still have the softness, I agree. I think the foam pour wrapped in the down is the way to go. So you kind of get best of both worlds. The foam, picture it um, maybe more like a very tailored sofa or even a mid-century type sofa, sort of very dense and um, very squared off, very linear. Probably if you sit on it and then got up, there would be no impression at all. And, but obviously there are different um, levels of density for the the foam itself. But, you know, everybody can imagine what foam is. So I would suggest if you have the option to go with the foam core wrapped in the down. And you can get down alternative as well if, the, if you are concerned with the uh, practices of sourcing down or if you have any allergies. Well, and then I was just thinking about the, what we were talking about, the dimensions, because I love to take a nap on a sofa. I know you're not a napper, but. I wish I was a napper. I like, love I to. to. Like, I, goal, napper goal. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> so that's another thing to keep in mind. If you're planning to take a nap on the sofa, you need to make sure that the length of the sofa is going to work for you and the depth, uh, because uh, some of these have, some of the sofas have a back cushions that are not removable. And so there's not really a lot of room to take a nap on them. Now, my sofa, the cushions come off. So if you want to take a really good nap, you can take them all off and you have lots of room there. But, you know, that's something to keep in mind as well. One last uh, option on the fill is polyester. Now, again, this would be really budget. So, you know, don't get your head turned by some pretty fabric with, and, you know, the description says polyester fill and you go for it. I would not recommend that for any sofa, kind of like we don't feel like a cardboard frame would be a great idea. Uh, polyester is just going to flatten, but it's it will be very budget conscious. But, you know, you do get what you pay for. And a sofa is something that should be lasting you uh, quite some time. You know, if you buy a quality sofa, I, it can last you 20 years, Mm -hmm. depending on the use, uh, you'll probably get tired of it before you wear it out if you buy a quality sofa. Okay, so we talked about this getting the swatches, very important. Uh, But let's talk about the types of fabric. So you have to think about how you're going to use the sofa. If your kids are all grown up and it's going to be a sofa that you're going to be occasionally on in your living room, well, you know, then you probably have the whole world of fabric options you know open to you because chances are people aren't going to be jumping up and down on your sofa and maybe you can avoid spills while you're in the room (laughs) at least not when you're in the room um and maybe you don't need in that room so you don't really necessarily have to worry about spills but you know if you're living in your living room or this is a sofa for your family room or if your family has younger kids then you really might want to consider the performance fabrics um, or at least a fabric that is a very durable type of fabric slip covers are an option i have not had the panacea uh, that i thought i was going to have with any of the slip covered sofas or love seats that i have purchased I have found it to be very difficult to get the slip covers on and off. Really? Yes. And I did do this with two different white sofas. Well, the big white sofa sectional and a small love seat that I have in one of my daughter's rooms now. I have found that the slip covers did not get 100% clean every time. Mm-hmm. They still look like they were worn. Maybe that was due to the the whiteness or the creamy color, I was not happy with it. And it would be a serious workout, especially with the sectional, to get all of the slipcovers off, washed, dried, not totally dry, just dry enough to try to slide back (laughs) on and then figuring out and putting the puzzle pieces back together. So I didn't love that. Wow. So I don't think that uh, for me, that was not the best way to go. I should have just gone darker, which now I've done. No, that's a good point because I've never bought a slip-covered sofa. Mine's slip-covered, but I hand custom made those covers for for my sofa. So my sofa slip-covers come off on and off easily. They wash well. Uh, They're linen. 
people to, most people are not going to make their own slip covers, but that's a good point. Cause I'm thinking, well, my slip covers are great, but then, oh yeah, I made them. So. Uh, but also if you're going to have your pets on there, I recommend just, I mean, if they're going to be outside and then in your house, just fold up a, a quilt or something to put on the cushions. I mean, I don't know if that looks the best, but I don't know that the animals are just bringing stuff in all the time. Is, do you do that? Yes, because they like to sit there and I love them and I let them look out the window. And I now I have a black drop cloth over my gorgeous <laughs> sofa. <laughs> that sounds good. I love wise. them more than my sofa, I guess, but I am protecting my sofa at the same time. So I'm just doing everything I can to make everyone happy yeah, and preserve my care. sofa. Yeah. No, I think that's very smart. So I, I have not purchased one, but I've been tempted and everyone's probably seen them because they're advertising like crazy on Instagram, but it's this, I think it's called paw it or something like that. It's a furry blanket that's very oversized and it's supposed to be water repellent and uh, have all these things that will protect your sofa from your dogs or cats, I guess. So I've been tempted because for the, you know, it's kind of like the furry pillows, like for the winter, mm -hmm. I could throw that on there. In California in the summer, I'm not going to want that no, furry thing not. on there. Some other considerations when you're looking at sofas, and this certainly pertains to online, but this could pertain to buying a sofa anywhere. Tufted. Do you like that idea? Do you like the look? But could you live with it? What if one of those buttons comes off? There's going to be crumbs or a fuzz or something that gets in there and you need to sort of vacuum that out so it's a little bit more maintenance sofa is actually tufted uh, on the back and and the other dumb thing that i did um was so are you saying t uh, uh, tufting no, is dumb well on mine it was because i'm not i'm gonna explain why it okay. was mine. in general i'm not saying it necessarily is but on mine i did tufted corduroy fabric corduroy mm. tufted fabric so you're getting the picture it's not flat it's not smooth right so when i slip covered it do you think that looked good it did not <laughs> you have corduroy under those slip covers yes Whoa. So what I wow had to do, that was a big presto change oh well i'm telling you it was right it just made it my job so much more difficult so i had to get little tufts i mean this is really the sad story little tufts like little cotton balls and stick them in each little tufted spot and then i got some batting and then like you would put in a quilt and then drape that over the sofa to kind of cover up the corduroy and the tufting and then i think i even put a blanket on top of that and then the slip covers on top of that well you learned a lot from that experience <laughs> it's good it's good <laughs> Welting, similar thing. I like the look of welting, but welting is going to get little crummies, little fuzzies, little things. I mean, they just get stuck in there. It's a groove. So I know when I'm doing my big cleans, I'm going all around and I'm doing them with my vacuum and getting in and around. And we don't even eat in that room. It just happens. Life happens, right? So um, even if it's just a little fuzz. So it's a little bit more maintenance. Legs. Are you going to have legs where you can see under the sofa? Are you going to have it skirted to the ground? Is it going to be some sort of flounce or is the skirting going to be really tailored? So these are all different aspects to think about. Um, if it's a very high-end e-commerce sofa website that you're working with, they'll probably give you choices for a lot of those things. So look into that. Think about it in your room. You know, we've discussed with you before scale and balance and the heft of furniture and yes that's right and there's so many different kinds of legs so that's really a great way to customize your sofa for your particular personality you know there's metal legs there's wooden ones and there's so many there's clunky chunky there's turned and there's some that are on casters i mean there are really some beautiful uh legs out there so I do have a few, um, I have a few brands that I could recommend. One that I found uh, that looks really good, um, but you'd have to do your own research. I have not seen or sat on one of these. Mm -hmm. First hand is the one that I recently purchased and I have in my house and I've done test driven it for everybody to tell you about. And we'll link to last week's episode where you talked about the sofa that you bought. It's at the crush at the end, but I'll link to it. But if you um, don't want to look at the show notes, it would be decorating tips and tricks slash four, four, three. Um, another one 
I have purchased for three different clients. So I've seen it in, in a variety of ways. And then um, I'm keeping you all in suspense. Who are these companies and what are these sofas? We can link to all these sofas and or the brands in the show notes so you can check them out for yourself. Okay. Sabaya Design. I had never heard of this company before, but I was looking for humane down fill and I was coming up with vegan sofas and all this. So I kind of went down that road and I came up with this company on a couple of different searches. And so I took a look at them and seems like a great company. Their sofas are made from recycled water bottles. So hmm. eco and sustainably made. <laughs> that sounds like the cardboard. I know. <laughs> Ouch. No, not cardboard. Um, so I don't think the frame is made from that, but it's called the Essential Sectional. It's a convertible chase. It's got rave reviews. So worth a look. Um, and then tried and true Ballard Designs really great sofas overall. I've had personal experience with three different clients with the Baldwin. Um, I will say there is a lot of the, the, the cushions are very puffy in a good way, very comfortable. You can kind of sink into it. I've seen it in neutrals. I saw it in a very dark color. And then I, there was a print that another client did. It's lovely in all of them. It's a classically shaped sofa, kind of like the, the Billy Baldwin, um, with a little bit more of overstuffed sense to it. It's very nice looking nice. sofa, very well made. Again, the kiln dried frame made in North Carolina. And, you know, just to say, if your sofa is coming uh, from someplace where they're custom making it, you're going to have to wait for it. You know, this is what we're saying. If you want one tomorrow, either buy it off the floor or in the um, stock fabric. Sometimes they have some available in the stock fabric. But usually if you're getting a sofa and you're choosing the fabric, and making any customizations, you're going to have to wait six to eight weeks for it. And I know this is what we experienced, mm -hmm. my, uh, my three clients and I, with the Ballard Design Baldwin sofa. And then lastly, Interior Define. I'm very happy with this company. I'm very happy with my sofa. They should actually be sponsoring the podcast as much as I'm talking about them. But uh, you can make all sorts of choices from the depth of your seat to the length uh, do you have a chase do you not is it storage is it a sleeper lots of different fabrics um they were all very yummy lots of them in performance um fabrics so you don't have to worry about stains and wear well great well thank you for that so anita what's our hot topic today well, it's one that you sent me, and thank you for that, Kelly. I love this one because I love history. And this is an article about a supermarket in Dublin that was built over a thousand-year-old Irish Viking house. And there is a video that shows you what we're talking about. But what they did that was so wonderful is that they actually put in a glass floor. And when I say glass, it's probably plexiglass or something like that. But the down below... The building is this old archaeological site, and so they made this uh, clear plexiglass floor so people could see the house down below. And there's a couple of places where they left these uh, glass, uh, left the, the floor glass where you could see down below. And uh, there's a video, and it just opened recently. But what a great idea. You know, I mean, we don't have this here in the U.S., thousand year old homes, but in Europe, what a wonderful idea. To save these relics, I mean, it's so sad that so many of these sites have just been tossed in the past because they didn't really appreciate them. I mean, people have just been building on top, on top, on top of these building sites for so long in Europe. Uh, so it's very exciting to me that they saved it. And what a fun uh, visit to the grocery store. You can look down and, and see that. Look at the video and the, the gentleman who's there, uh, he's some an archaeologist in in Dublin or in Ireland or somewhere I think Mr. Duffy and he's explaining to you what's going on and they think that it was a viking home right and then, so it's like they're exploring their the nordic history there and i thought it was just absolutely wonderful there you are in um i guess it's a german grocery store line right and then you're you're getting your milk and your bread and whatnot and you're rolling right over this ruin is fantastic. I just love it. <laughs> I know. So they're going to... Now, 
I no one probably told them that's kind of going to be a nightmare keeping that clean that glass clean and then what happens when some kid comes and just scratches it with something I don't know but that's their problem not ours <laughs> uh, yeah 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 I think it's a maintenance nightmare but I love the concept Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. I was thinking about the nightlights concept and I saw this on Amazon and I thought I've got to share this. I don't have it yet, but I'm planning to buy some of these. They are electrical outlet wall plate with LED nightlights. So what it is, is you take the cover off of your outlet and then you just, uh, you know, screw this this one on. And it looks almost exactly like just a white cover plate for your outlet. But it's got an electric eye that's kind of very tiny, hard to see. And then when it gets dark, it has an LED light that comes out the bottom of the plate. Uh, so that, you know, if you had it somewhere on your stairs, you could see that at night or in a hallway. So here's the benefit of it, you know, versus a traditional old night light that you would put in there with a little bulb. So this is not sticking out. You're not going to run into it with the vacuum or, you know, knock it with your foot. Uh, You don't have to replace the bulb. You don't have to turn it off in the morning or turn it on at night because it's automatic. It frees up both outlets to use, and it costs about 10 cents a year in electrical costs, electricity cost, I should say. And it's a pack of two for about $35. Uh, The other thing was they also have a version of this for your wall switches. So you could change the plate on your... uh, on your wall switch for your light and put one of these on. Uh, The only negative I can think about this is I think it's going to be a pretty blue light and you know that blue light's going to wake you up. So I definitely would not put this in my bedroom at night, the one you're sleeping in, but maybe if you had to go out in a hallway in the middle of the night, maybe to get a glass of water or something, this would be great on the stairs or just something where, you know, you wanted to be able to see uh, to get down the hallway better. That, this is so weird. Um, my crush's lights are light-related as well. Okay, do tell. 
<laughs> okay, then. Yes. I will. Tea lights. Uh, the little battery-operated tea lights. I've had these in the past, the little tiny mm-hmm. ones, like the little puck. And they kind of stink, actually. <laughs> Don't you think? You get, like, a pack of those. And you're like, there's, you know, you're definitely going to have some duds mm-hmm. right off the bat. And then they don't really last long, and the light isn't that bright. And you're like, why not? Um, so I was recently doing a craft with my senior citizen cr- crew. I think I've mentioned yes, this to everyone have. before that I was doing that. But then when Corona hit, obviously, the I was not being able to go visit my senior gals. Um, but now I'm back. We did it outside the other day. And we were doing a craft where they were, they were covering j- mason jars with leaves and doing a little twine thing on the top. And the idea was to put a little tea light inside. So I did a lot of research because I didn't want these ladies to get duds. And so I found these great tea lights on Amazon. They're bigger. They definitely have a nice light. It's not as warm as I'd like, but it's a good light. And I was testing them for days before. And they were they were really great. And especially inside something that had some covering over it, the light was still coming through. So if you're looking for an alternative to candles for maybe your holiday table or something like that, or just to have, maybe this, these would be the size to put into votive. So it'd be perfectly sized for that. If you wanted to put those around your home for a little ambiance throughout the holidays or all through the year, I would definitely suggest these they come in a pack of 12 and they were very reasonably priced well that sounds wonderful oh, it's just, i think uh, i get more out of it than they do but they do have Aww. a really good time and then they, they had a reason to see each other too because you know obviously they've been very segregated the last several months so it was very nice so we have a great question it's a kind of a little dual question from angela g uh angela actually wrote to me uh through my blog um but she's an avid listener and she was um, telling me about them changing over their bedroom furniture. They've had the same furniture for, I think it was like 27 years or something like that. They moved around a lot because her husband was in the military. And now she really wants to redo their bedroom. And she was painting over, changing the bed on the headboard and all that to something creamy white with some fabric, some tufting, but she was going to keep the nightstands from their original mm-hmm. set. And she, I believe she said it was a Bassett furniture suite and um, a, a darker stain. So she went to recommendation whether to stain these nightstands or to paint them. And then she was also looking for some recommendations on some uh, ruffled linen duvet cover and some sheets. The headboard or the bed is a white color with a, a kind of an oatmeal, is that or a beige upholstery? Right. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard to recommend whether she paint or stain the nightstands, not seeing the room. So I would have a hard time weighing in on that. But I would say if she goes with, if the bed's white, and she goes with white bedding, then, you know, you might want to keep the nightstands a stained color so that there's some contrast because I don't think you want everything to be white and everything to be exactly neutral. That would be a little bit boring. So that's kind of my thought there. Now, if she went with the color, you know, on the bed, then maybe the stain would, would go better. So I, so really my thought is not it should be stained or it should be white, but it just should work in the context of the room. And then on the bedding, you know, we've uh, Magic Linen is a place that you can buy from. Uh, Soft Surroundings has some great things. And, you know, we've even gotten the sheets from Land's End when they have their 50% off sale. So the linen sheets are getting pretty easy to find these days, but the linen bedding is a little more difficult. But I know that I've, I've had a ruffled, I bought a rough set of bedding uh, from uh, the Magic Linen. So that's certainly an option. Yeah, I love the Magic Linen, and I would highly recommend them. That was on my list as well. Uh, There's also some purveyors of... Well, I'm going to say, though, their sheets are a little rough, though. I I like them for the... the bedspread or the duvet cover but not for the not for the sheets Mm -hmm. yeah i don't have the sheets but as far as the duvet cover and they and the um, some of the shams really beautiful angela and everyone uh definitely Mm -hmm. check out magic linen and they also have really beautiful colors i think they just do the colors really well and and on etsy there are other people that have similar things i've seen similar things to magic linen so you could um not google but you could search in etsy 
for ruffled linen duvets and you should come up with similar things and maybe they would have even more colors. Um, as far as the nightstands, Angela, and I would say this to just anyone who is painting or thinking about changing over stained furniture, my thought about changing the stain is you have to take the original stain off to stain it a different color. Um, so I know I wouldn't do that. Um, just like I wouldn't make a slip cover. But if that's something that you would w want to put the time in and effort in to do, I like I need his idea of maybe staining it a darker color. I'd go maybe really dark rather than sort of a cherry um, to have that contrast could be really nice. But I think it would be just as lovely to paint it over. And maybe you'd want to use that Amy Howard one-step paint uh, that apparently goes right over stain. You don't have to sand or do anything, uh, hence the name, the one-step. And I checked into the colors that she had. She's had a lot of colors to choose from. So if you wanted to keep it all the lighter neutrals, you could do that. You could also maybe do a really deep gray or something like that, or charcoal black might be nice if you're pulling in black anyplace else in the room. So my thought would be you might get the same bang with a lot less effort if you paint it. No, I think those are great ideas. So thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you got a lot of great information about purchasing a sofa online. Definitely do your research. And it's so fun to get swatches. So do all of that. Come back next week and hang out with us again. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.